This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. Wisconsin's Lieutenant Governor met with tribal leaders this week at Lacoudere Community College to unveil several tribal initiatives that the governor plans to propose in his budget Thursday. Danielle Kading has more. The governor's budget would include a roughly $1 million increase in grants for child welfare services for tribes over the next two years. Governor Evers will also earmark around $640,000 in gaming revenues for the next phase of a planned youth wellness center to treat opioid addiction. Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes says they want tribes to know the state will respect their sovereignty. We're going to respect their role that they play in the, in, in the state of Wisconsin, as we all do. This is an administration that is going to be welcoming and inclusive uh, of all people and making sure that voices are heard, voices that have traditionally not been at the table. Lakota Ray Vice Chairman Jason Schlender says he's encouraged by what the administration is proposing. Many tribes have declared a state of emergency as far as this opioid epidemic and and so that's one way of reaching out and helping us, you know, so having a place for our youth to go and or if it's just treatment in, in general. The governor's budget would also provide more than half a million dollars for language revitalization and around one million dollars in higher education grants to tribal college students. For National Native News, I'm Danielle Kading in Superior, Wisconsin. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem says plans are underway to display tribal flags at the state capitol. No made the announcement during Tribal Relations Day. She says the flags will be a reminder to tribes that the state is with them, part of reconciliation and a new beginning. A ceremony will be planned with the nine tribes in the state. Neighboring tribes in North Dakota formally presented their flags to state lawmakers and officials in January. The five tribal flags are on display in the North Dakota capital. A South Dakota House committee passed a bill Wednesday to codify the official indigenous language of the state, Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota. Supporters say it's a step to right some wrongs of the past, including the punishment of Native Americans for speaking their native language. Today, efforts are underway to grow native languages in the state. The Senate advanced the bill. Here's what Senator Troy Heinert, the bill's sponsor, expressed after it passed a Senate committee earlier this month. Speaking your native language was was frowned upon in South Dakota. And uh, I got a text from one of the senators that was on the committee, and he said, you can feel the pain of of not being acknowledged for who you are, and this bill will help ease that pain. And, you know, that's, that's pretty emotional right there. The bill heads to the House floor. The Michigan Democratic Party recently formed a Native American caucus. The group includes citizens from Michigan tribes to bring forward Native issues, including addressing violence against Native women, advancing education, and addressing stereotypes in the treatment of Indigenous people. The caucus hopes to increase inclusion of Michigan's Native community in the political process. Town halls in Navajo communities in Arizona have been rescheduled for early March by Navajo lawmakers to discuss the potential acquisition of the Navajo Generating Station, a coal-fired power plant, by the Navajo Transitional Energy Company. The meetings were set to take place this week, but were canceled due to snowy weather that hit the Navajo Nation. People in communities around Hard Rock and Kiento may be impacted by the potential acquisition. The town halls are open to the public to allow a space for people to give comment and concerns about the generating station. Some Navajo lawmakers are working to keep the power plant open to save jobs and the economic boost it provides. The plant is set to close in 2019. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Support by Vision Maker Media, whose mission is to empower and engage Native people to share stories. Vision Maker Media is now inviting film projects intended for public television. You can find out more at visionmakermedia.org. Support by PrairieEdge.com, where you'll find a variety of buffalo items like robes, skulls, rattles, and drums, serving the Native American community for over 36 years, located in Rapid City or online at PrairieEdge.com. Wopila. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.